Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Sex in the City movie. This is the first movie. This is the final part, part seven. And if this is your first one, you're like, what's going on here? I already recapped the movie in its entirety. This time we are listening to Michael Patrick, you know, what had, uh, as he gives his two cents throughout the movie, does his commentary. And I'm just kind of adding on my thoughts as we go. Now, there are parts of this movie where they play music, and I can't play music because of YouTube rules. So it, I'm, sometimes I have to skip parts, but I'll explain what we're skipping, what you're missing, that sort of thing. So this one, we pick up with what just happened. Let's see. Charlotte just had her baby. Remember, she cursed the day the big was born, and then her water broke. She was at the hospital. There you go. Carrie went and saw her. Harry told Harry told Carrie, that's a funny sentence, that Big was uh, missing her, wrote her letters, and she's like, what? So she had to rush home and figure out what that meant and where the letters are. So let's pick up from there. But first, if you're enjoying this, do check out my Patreon. We're doing deep dives on the original series over there. I'm going episode by episode talking about each one and finding out any behind the scenes information I can find along the way and just really having a good time. So be sure to check that out. Every tier over there gets access to the Sex and City episodes. We also have a tier with uh, Always Sunny if you're into that show. And the top tier is picking what we're watching. So lots to cover, lots to talk about. Let's get into this episode. So when I was writing this, I found these love letters because I knew I wanted to reference them. And then I started to think, oh, wow. He doesn't really, they're not his thing, as as I typed in love, but he knows they're her thing. So he sits down and he types out every letter, other people's love to her. From Beethoven. And it's kind of a... I'm going to go ahead and interrupt here and say, I enjoyed the first movie. It wasn't my favorite, but I didn't hate it. Um, but I didn't like that part. I didn't like that he typed out other people's feelings for care. You know what I mean? Like the, the typing out other people's love letters. It just didn't seem heartfelt. And I gather, I mean, I get what Michael Patrick Dickhead is explaining here is that that was his gesture because she likes it fine. But I just, it just didn't seem like the grand gesture. A big expression, but once again, it's an expression of him understanding what she cares about. The Love Letters of Great Men, Volume 1, plus one more. And then a very not fancy writing, but the truth. You know, and the fact that Sarah Jessica chooses to cover her eyes is amazing because they were filled with tears. But it was almost too much for her to look at. It would not be a Michael Patrick Dickhead (laughs) commentary if he didn't point out that Sarah Jessica Parker was quote unquote amazing because he does it every single time and that she's brave because, well, I'm going to barf. I wanted to call him, but our love, Carrie and Big, volume. And just as she's about to delete. And I like the fact that you thought you were not going to see Louise again. And then you see her life. And she's a bride, and she's got a world, and now suddenly you're in the Louise in the City movie. And you know, there are girls everywhere getting married, and they don't have to live in New York, and they don't have to be Carrie Bradshaw, and they don't have to be 40, and they don't have to be marrying Mr. Big. But it's the love of their life that they're marrying. And I like the fact that you see white again as a good thing versus as a bad thing. Because if you don't, you can send them to me and I'll squeeze my feet into them. But it's it's already 5 o'clock. Hello. There are Which literally 525 is kind of a bargain now. There, there are even more. And I was kind of like, yeah, well, I can't say 6. That's crazy. And of course, the only thing that would get her out of the house, shoes. I just wanted to add in an audible eye roll here. So what I like about this is the light's on in the closet. So you're thinking, is he? Why is the light on? What I love about Chris's performance right now is he sees her and he smiles first because that's his first reaction. And then he realizes, oh, I don't have the, 
I'm in the, I forgot. I forgot we don't love each other anymore. I was going to get these to you. I didn't want it to be a total loss. It wasn't logic. Yeah. Aaron's music is so gorgeous. It's the same theme reworked. It's an amazing piece because sometimes it's really sad. Sometimes it's really happy. And the coat comes in very convenient as a pillow. Why did we ever decide to get married? That's the, the interesting moral of the story to me. Means something if we didn't. Is that they were literally perfectly happy. I just don't think it's within Carrie's character to be perfectly happy ever. If we spent the six years of her wafting around back and forth and even when they were in the relationship she was being neurotic and questioning the relationship you know all well, we've been there you know what i'm talking about here's an interesting thing about the design team jeremy conway our designer and pat field our costume designer without knowing it both put her and the closet in the exact same color palette they showed up the same day jeremy painted the closet that color Pat had her in that weird color. It's a, like a, 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 a celadon green. It's not like a common color. They were just all in the same place. Let's all say it together. They're so brave. I love the unknowing what's going to happen. I guess there's just Carrie's just basically feeling sort of, well, we screwed it up. We re regret. I wanted to make sure that the first proposal was bad so that you could finally see this. See, now this is something. This is. Look at the way they look at each other. Come on. That's the why we did the movie. Carrie Brown. It never Will you marry ever me? entered my mind that they wouldn't get married. It was really just how they got married. See, this is and I really happened. wanted them to find the way to their own wedding, not society's idea of how they should get married, but to find their way there. And then the Cinderella moment with the very Mr. Big twist, his hand goes up under her skirt. It's a sexy fairy tale moment. He always has to be creepy, right? Completely creepy. And just like he knew that the closet was right for her, she knew that the courthouse was right for him, and she's wearing her original instinct. So they're basically having the wedding that they should have had all those months ago. But now they really feel it. It's just the two of them. And of course, the romantic comedy, Leg Lift Over the City of New York. So, which shows me that he adapted a little bit of her philosophy. We had this courthouse. The scene was originally filmed out, going to be filmed outside. But when the press started following us around, I really didn't want the ending of the movie to be known. So we moved it inside and hid them behind doors. They were supposed to be outside and it was going to be rice throwing and everything. But it was a trade-off. I thought it's better to have the secret than the, the visual. Okay, so here is where the music plays. So I'm going to do my best to play little snippets, but I can't play this track part with this song in it. So we're just going to see what I can play. Okay, so, so much music playing. I'll just tell you what he's saying. He's saying so many other romantic comedies would have ended on the wedding. We wanted to show you this reception and show you that it's not traditional, it's small, it's in this, you know, place where the, all the women come together and have it there. So the Jennifer Hudson All Dressed Up in Love song continues to play. Michael Patrick Dickhead is talking about boom, it's about the ladies at the end, going into a club, the four of them together, happy ending, yay. So the music continues to loudly play. Michael Patrick Dickhead is then telling us that that where they're having the drink at the end is actually the upstairs to Diane, Diane von Furstenberg's store. They just redid it to look like a club slash bar where, the, where they're getting together having their toast. Music still playing. He's talking about how he ended with Samantha's character single because she's essentially choosing herself. I really wish I could play this part for you. I can't because the Jennifer Hudson song has just totally taken over. It's so loud. 
Michael Patrick Dick had his talking over it, but it's it's even almost hard to hear him because the song is so loud, so I can't play it. But you're really not missing much. He's just wrapping up the movie and talking about how it was important to end on this note with the friendship and all dressed up and playing this music and four happy girls together, you know, all, all the stuff we want in a happy ending movie. Well, thank you so much for enjoying, I hope, and indulging me in this extra bonus, bonus, bonus of the little scenes. The little- okay, I wanted to play that little clip so you could hear him ending it out because what a bummer way to end. It's just that we can't play any more of his because he's talking over the music and it's really annoying. But that's it for the movie. So I had so much fun recapping it. I'll be honest, these commentaries, I enjoy doing them. I enjoy reacting to them, but he definitely grates on me. And I get comments like that, like, I can only take him in small doses. That's exactly how I feel, too. And you can probably sometimes pick up on the frustration in my voice. I'm trying to do the best I can to make it fun and funny and keep it entertaining. But he is just drinking his own Kool-Aid like nobody I've ever seen or heard before. I just I just don't understand going through life like that, but that's a different conversation. I just want to thank you personally for being here through every one of these episodes, being here through this movie. I really do appreciate it. It's been so much fun interacting in the comments with you guys and going back through this and just all of it and making fun of Michael Patrick Dickhead. It's one of my favorite pastimes. I really appreciate it and I hope you all have a fabulous day and I can't wait for the next recap and I will talk to you guys again soon. Be sure to leave me lots of comments because all the comments help and I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.